when I was younger, it was just about hanging out with the guys and playing on the street. And that's all it was. It wasn't until high school where, okay, drinking going on, Pakololo came along. It wasn't until I got to the adult age where ice came along. And that's when it enhanced everything. I did what I wanted to do growing up. People respected me because they feared me. And when drugs really came involved, when ice came around, that's when, that's when my partying really took off. And that's when I started getting in trouble with the law. One person with my size back then and doing what I wanted to do, um, it was real easy to rob people. While I was out there robbing people, and there, there was a couple close calls where uh, people wanted to kill me, and you know, um, I still never see that as a, a problem. And finally, when I went to court for this charge, the judge kind of told me, um, he was, he was going to send me to treatment because he knew I had a drug addiction problem. And, you know, I wasn't ready to quit. So I told him, you know what, um, I think I, I'd rather go to prison. Prison, I could, back then you could get paroled in 18 months. Uh, the treatment that they wanted to send me was two years. So me doing the math, I was like, if I do prison, I can, I can be paroled six months earlier. So I did that and he sent me up to Halaba. I have like nine felonies and I'm still on paper for one of them right now. Prison wasn't a consequence. I came out and I still kept doing what I wanted to do. I still partied and I did that. I did that for, I did that for 20 years. I did that for 20 years. I did that for 20 years. When I entered here, it was, it, it was, I thought it was cool. Like, oh man, I should have came here a long time ago. I, I asked myself, what is gonna be different for me? I sat in that chapel and that's when I developed a relationship with God for the first time. What really um, carries me through is I got a sponsor in the AA Fellowship who, um, who guides me and gives me suggestions on, on what to do. That was a difference maker. After I graduated, of course, you know, I just continued to work on myself more and um, just find that balance. And I continue to do that. My job title now is I'm the director of production. I'm responsible for everything that goes on in this warehouse. It keeps me in meetings. It keeps me in front of my desk. I need to make sure that donations are being processed. I make out the routes for the drivers. Sometimes they want to talk story because they're having a bad day. I have an open door policy. I think one of the biggest things that I bring from the streets is that I know where they're coming from. I cannot survive from what I did in the past. I still have to go meetings, get in service, give back to people, attend my home group, talk to my sponsor, do all these little things that lead up that I'll be okay. I cannot just stop doing what I'm doing and think I'm gonna be sober for the rest. It doesn't work that way. I have a solution now where I don't have to start tripping out. I, I, I don't have to go use, I don't have to go party to, to feel okay. If it was not for the Salvation Army, I would not have the life that I have today. That I can wake up every day and be all right with myself. I have an awesome life. I work at an awesome place and it reminds me that every day is just, is just a blessing. Sky's the limit, anything can happen.